The following program shows real people taken into custody by Dallas SWAT. They are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Police! Police! They're going to be afraid to do this. They're not going to be much good in an operation when things turn bad. It tests men's courage. What is it in life? You want to be on the SWAT team? You want a rodeo? Let's pick a safe activity. In the worst case, it turns into a hostage situation, and then we have to assault the vehicle. Get down, now! Get down! We're going to be running a vice warrant on a strip club. And of course, obviously, a lot of very surprised and angered patrons. I'm one of five rappel masters that we have in the division. And basically what my responsibility is, is to make sure that the team that we have has all the tools and all the tactics necessary to address any problem that we have. We're developing our high angle team. Basically what this gives us is the ability to hit buildings from an unexpected entry point. I'm looking forward to today. There is nothing that you will do in SWAT or in police work that's more fun than helicopter repelling. We're gonna put guys in a very stressful situation. We're gonna put them, you know, 100, 150 feet up in the air and uh, have them go down the line. Johnny. And this is the one way you can measure a man's heart to see if he'll go into battle with you is by doing this kind of stuff here. If I can't get a guy to go out of a helicopter and lower himself to the ground, because what's he afraid of? He's gonna be afraid of dying. If a guy's afraid of dying in a rappel situation, how afraid is he going to be of dying in a hostage rescue? We got guys that are deathly afraid of heights, yet they're out here doing it. I don't even like going on uh, roller coasters. And I've got the most admiration for guys like that, more so than I do the guys that have no fear of this stuff. I'm going to give you the fingers like this. At that, you guys are going to go. All right? Enjoy this stuff, kids. Vice warrant on a strip club, which is allegedly a front for prostitution. Listen up, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the, the briefing. Let's look at the video here so you can orientate yourself. And we will be coming up from the other direction because they always stand in front of the windows over here. One of our concerns on this is that the surveillance cameras, which are situated in the front of the building, may give us away on our approach. Now, there are cameras, so it's going to be it's going to be up when we come around the corner. Three teams are going to be making simultaneous entry through three different doors uh, that are located in the front of the building. Team one will be our rope team. Team two is Sergeant Rose's team. We'll take the, the two opening. And team three will be my team. We'll take that third opening there.
That's the best I can get of your door for the roll team. Coming off the top here, you have your door here. That's where you'll be coming in. Point to the door because it looks like two doors there. Okay, My team is going to be rappelling off the roof into the first door, into the office area, where we're going to try and secure evidence linking the business to prostitution. <laughs> unload here, come around the corner, work our teams up in columns of two, okay? Inside column will be uh, team two, outside column will be team three. We'll stage there until the rope team gets set. We're going to let them drop their lines, get a couple guys on the ground, then Sergeant Younger will give us a thumbs up to go. We'll launch from here on foot, move up to, to opening two and opening three. There's your DJ area. That's where a gun will be. There's a gun right here. If you can see this fellow sitting here at the table here, he's got a pistol stuck down in his waistband here. They're not shy about showing it. And there's another one over here. Anybody else have any questions on your assignments? OK, let's go to work. You guys good? All right, let's go. Well, we're practicing our repelling techniques, uh, trying to iron out any of the wrinkles that we might have, since this is the first time we've done an operational repel. So we're going to uh, have a little something for him today. This is our static nylon rappel line. It'll hold 4,000 pounds, basically 10 guys. This is a figure eight descending device that will run the rope through. This will slow the descent down, or at least make it controllable. Works on the principle of friction. Hook it back up into your carabiner, and that's what we're going to use to come down the wall. Y'all gonna be dropping off this corner here, coming down in front of that door on this side here. That way we can we can stay stealth and not be compromised before we reach our objective. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to come from the roof and drop down right next to the door that we're gonna breach. You know, we've trained it a thousand times, but uh, we've never actually used it on operation. So, a little bit exciting to be able to use it on the first time. A couple of guys think they're tough guys in there. But this will be a slow time for them. I mean, it's going to be 5 o'clock in the morning. So that's why we're hitting it now. We're in APC2. Let's go, guys. Let's mine them up. Okay. We need to hit this place with the element of surprise. The expectation for armed resistance is very likely. It's all stealth until we launch. Short 10 drop. seconds, guys. Stand by. This one? This is it. This is it. from here again. Team two. Three on the outside. We ain't got any rope, team. You ready? You ready? Let's go, guys. warrant on a strip club which is allegedly a front for prostitution he's got a pistol stuck down in his waistband here they're not shy about showing it three teams are going to be making simultaneous entry through three different doors we got team one coming down on ropes hitting the far left door Team two hitting the middle door. And team three's hitting the right hand door, which is where the waiting room is. Team two. 
We ain't got any rope team. Pistol at. This is clear. You guys good here? Show me your hands. Got any weapons on you? Tell me now. I got him. Team one, it's clear. Team one and team leader uh, three are holding areas where. You guys want to help out laying hands on guys and start this? There's about 15, 20 inside. If you guys want to help out, that'd be great. There's a shotgun by your right leg. Who plays pool at 6 a.m.? I didn't think there would be any customers here between you and me in the whole world. I got him. All right. How long have you been working here? Like for two days. Two days? Yeah. And I'm just trying to go home and sleep. Well, you'll probably get I've to go home here night. pretty quick. From two, from 2 in the morning, to get up at 2 in the morning, is that six. what time you showed up for? Yeah, at, at, from two, Me too. At 2 a.m. to 6 to get arrested at 7. On, yeah, I didn't crazy. do the arrest part, but that other part, that getting up part, stunk. I am. How do you repel them? Good, good. It was fun to get up there and have it all be ice. Let's go, guys. Clubber ended up having to lay on his stomach and grab the edge like that. No way. Yeah. Did you lay down there? No, I didn't. I didn't either. We got to use something new that we hadn't used before, so everybody always keeps their fingers crossed that when you try a new technique, which we've never done this in an operation before, that it works out well and did for us. A uh, 12 gauge shotgun was recovered, about uh, 15 to 20 bodies inside, some dope. Of course, obviously, uh, a lot of very surprised and uh, angered uh, patrons. room right there, the office is what they wanted to make sure nobody was in. That was the main thing, because they wanted to, everything that they have on there is is documented. We were able to successfully recover the computers and the uh, files, so hopefully we'll be able to shut them down for good this time. This is a case of false advertising. She wasn't in there. So are we ready to go? Go! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tonight, we're going over to the uh, Fort Worth Cowtown Rodeo. It's a weekly rodeo. I wish I was going to compete, but, you know, I'm retired, so I'm just gonna go and watch and feed the fire, I guess. It's really rare that we get a chance to all go do something together, so we really cherish those times. I miss rodeo, and I still have all my equipment, so, you know, whenever I see that, I'm like, man, I wish I was still rodeoing. Now the outfit's topped off. Now we're ready. Let's go. The only major injury I've had from rodeo, I broke my hand once. It's the first time the kids went to the rodeo, and then the second time, he gashed his head open. It was like a pinch and not a cut. You needed 28 stitches. <laughs> When I was rodeoing uh, professionally, it used to be a pretty good rodeo. I, it's been a few years since I've been here, so. And I'm, uh, I don't think I've ever been over here to watch a rodeo, but I've never been in through the front doors like, we're, like I'm going tonight, so. He probably would compete if he could. The switch has not been flipped. The switch has not been flipped. <laughs> Yeah, 
He's got to stick that chest out more, though. He was sitting on his pockets the whole time. I won't say that I quit just for them. I realized I was getting a little older. Competition was getting younger. You know, the horses were getting stronger. However, I feel like I could still ride. You know, if any real cowboys see me with this on my hat, <laughs> I'll like get hung. It's definitely hard to, to sit in the stands and watch a rodeo when you're used to competing. Come on, whip over your head. There you go. Now whip back. Oh. What's the best night for the bareback riding here? Yes, Thursday, okay. from 6 till 10. Okay. CK Reed is who I need to call the interrupt? Yeah. OK. All right, well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. OK, bye-bye. I'm seriously thinking about going back maybe next week and um, entering up. I think I might enter up next weekend. I think you should. Maybe you should do it. Yeah, because I, I think, I mean, my fire's going. I, I, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get on another one, see how it is. Getting ready to uh, brief for a buy bust. A buy bust is actually where a, a undercover officer will go out and make the buy, and we're basically laying in wait. And as soon as the transaction is made, we uh, we pounce on the suspect. Uh, real quick, guys, let's get started. Narcotics is doing a uh, uh, a buy bust operation. Uh, what it is, it's the uh, grocery store parking lot. There. There's a little complex there. There should be maps. You should all have gotten maps with grids on there, and that's how we're going to identify our locations on the, on the site there. This will be their largest purchase from this individual. It's uh, for a quarter key for $5,000. Anybody have any questions for the, the UCs? In this operation, we're going to be using an undercover officer, which we term a UC. Okay. Description of the guy. See the light mail, about 35, 8, 150. Uh, has two gold teeth up front, uh, <coughs> black hair with blonde highlights, and uh, a lot of gold. We're going to bring in a red expedition up there with two UCs in it. The UC is going to pull in. The suspect's going to pull next to him. My specific role in this operation is I'm, a, I'm an assaulter on the vehicle. Um, that entails me going to the vehicle and uh, getting eyes on the suspect. We'll have two uh, full complement assault takedown vehicles. We'll have uh, Sergeant Rose will be in covert capacity for eyes on, real time uh, information intel that we need to get. My role tonight is to uh, provide real-time intelligence to both assault teams from a covert vehicle with narcotics, give them recommendations how, how they want to come in and what type of assault to use to take the suspect into custody. Once he gets on site, we will move in and we'll do a front assault on the uh, suspect vehicle. Uh, if for some reason he doesn't want to get out of his car, then we're going to have to take him down inside of his car. It's going to be critical that we get a block on him. If we give him any gap, there's a chance that he may try to, to maneuver right or left and push his way through us. And that puts us at, at great risk of being run over by this guy. The Sergeant Younger's team will be a blocking vehicle. We need to do a rear block. When we do our block, we don't have to go bumper to bumper. We could do this. That would put our cargo door there. <laughs> Worst case scenario is they pull up to the site, the UC goes to get in the car, and there's more suspects in the car than he expected, and they pull a weapon, and now they want to leave the property. So it turns into a rip. A rip is basically a robbery, where the undercover or the confidential informant who's trying to buy the drugs gets robbed. The last time that they've done this, they had two good eyes that walked up on foot, and they feel strongly that they're part of surveillance, counter surveillance for their, their bad guys. Once they have the undercover officer in the car and they're conducting business, their counter surveillance may spot us. And then that could cause a hostile situation or you know, cause a situation to go really bad. Getting ready for a buy bust. A buy bust is where a, a undercover officer will go out and make the buy. And we're 
basically laying in wait. This will be their largest purchase from this individual. It's a four quarter key. Uh, once he gets on site, we will move in and we'll do a front assault on the uh, suspect vehicle. And as soon as the transaction is made, we pounce on the suspect. Just get those guys together. Let's walk out. We're going to do a real quick rehearsal. We're going to do some walkthroughs here of the actual takedown of the vehicle. I want assaulter and assaulter, and then you'll be the uh, the support in the back with the taser and your commando. Do you see how are we taking him out of this vehicle? They want us to take him down like we do okay. a suspect. Let's load up in a van. Let's let's pull up by this one over here and walk through it. Our primary mission is going to be to block this. We're going to go heavy by you It'd probably be better for us to do pistols just for the fact that there's a possible situation that could arise that would keep the UC in the car. OK. The ultimate positions have to be windshield for the point, guys, because otherwise, if you go here, now you got to crossfire at that cat over there. You might have to shoot through glass, through car doors. Bottom line is, guys, if we have to assault this vehicle, it turns into a hostage rescue, then we obviously know that we don't return fire unless we can identify our threats. You're going up to it blind. Any questions? <sighs> the big day for the rodeo is uh, a week away, so you have to get out here and get a little training in. I think this is what they call midlife crisis. I'm this old and I'm trying to do this stuff. I should get a clue. <laughs> All right, now it's ready. Go. I think it would be a safe bet to say that I'll be the only 40 year older riding at the rodeo. <laughs> With my luck, there'll probably be a bunch of teenagers just full of testosterone and vim, vigor, and vitality. You know what? The old man's gonna bring it to him, though. I feel good. And I was thinking bucking horse. Every time I grabbed an obstacle, I'm like, yeah. In fact, I wish I could do it right now. Five flat. I'll take it. Oh. Three things can happen on this. One, the suspect can get out of his car and we take him down on the ground. Two, he can stay in his vehicle and we take him down. Or three, it turns into a hostage situation and he takes the UC as a hostage and then we have to assault the vehicle that way. Undercover officer is actually going to be in the car with the suspect. It used to be that we never let anybody, as an undercover officer, get into a car with the suspect simply due to the fact that we lost two officers, undercover officers, doing that one time. Some of the things that can go wrong in an operation like this is that the suspect not show at all. They can bring somebody with them and prepare to pull a rip off. Worst case scenario, once they have the undercover officer in the car and they're conducting business, their counter surveillance may spot us, and then that could cause a hostile situation. My role is to uh, direct our, our ground officers in and give them actual real-time eyes on information on the location, the suspect vehicle description, and the actual suspect description. 820 to 810. Let me know when you're in place. 
We're in the front lot now. We're in front of. Uh, Nice and busy. The biggest problem that we have in a deal like this, any buy bust operation, it generally they're being conducted in a public setting. That's always a huge concern to us, is compromising the safety of the, of the civilians. Okay, keep, keep going, bud. The good eyes could be on site already. There's where they're going to try to set it up, that guy. Back in, Simon, if you can. Good. See what you need to do, Kent, when we come out. Just hard right and straight down. Yeah, we don't really have any other place for cover, but we're out of the line of sight of the suspect when he drives in anyway. So, should be fine. Uh, you ready to come on in here and do this? She's calling the UCN now. Okay, uh, and once it he gets in there, he'll make the call. sitting in a blue Ford pickup truck, city cab. That's right about where you guys have been parking. He's just sitting in there. He's pulled up and hasn't got out. Just a uh, FYI to you that there's somebody there. 1882, all surveillance. The uh, UC is uh, headed onto the lot and fixing to make the call. That's our red expedition. Ooh. Got him. FYI, I think that truck's vacating right now. Yeah, they're wondering if that green truck is counter surveillance. If he turns in this way towards us, he's checking us out. Our suspect only lives like uh, a block, not even a block away, so he could have a security element, you know, so we just have to be careful and keep back cover. The green truck's still doing uh, drop-by, he just drove by us. 20 to 21. Uh, 21. You guys keep an eye on that, uh, on that pickup. He's coming, it's orange, he's coming. Okay, 820 to 810. Uh, the suspect is on his way, but we don't know what type of vehicle. 20 to 21, that pickup's going right uh, going right behind you right now. Just keep an eye on that. Well, there's a green pickup again. I could be trouble. Getting ready for a buy bust. This will be their largest purchase from this individual. It's a uh, four quarter key. A buy bust is where an undercover officer will go out and make the buy, and we're basically laying in wait. And as soon as the transaction is made, we pounce on the suspect. Hey, uh, you ready to come on in here and do this? She's calling the UCN now. Okay, uh, and once it he gets in there, he'll make the call. Guys. 20 to 21. Go ahead, 21. They're wondering if that green truck is counter surveillance. You guys keep an eye on that, uh, on that pickup. He's coming, it's orange, he's coming. Okay, 820 to 810. Uh, the suspect is on his way. The suspect leaving the apartment. Is he going to walk over to where you are? Yeah, he's going to walk over to where I'm at. OK, stand by. The suspect is en route. He's on foot, red shirt and a ball cap. In some ways, it makes it better. Uh, other ways, he can be a little more Who's uh, in the parking lot? quicker oh, yes. to take off running. So. You got eyes on the suspect? The suspect saying that he doesn't have a vehicle and he may want to move the uh, whole deal, so just stand by. And they want to keep him here, so stand by. He just walked into the parking lot now. He's at the uh, UC's vehicle right now, and he's getting in position number four behind the driver. Uh, he's inside right now. He got in the back seat on the driver's side. Number four seat, guys. Oh, there's a green pickup again. That could be trouble. What's he saying? Okay, you see is getting out. Oh, it's a go. It's a go. Suspect is at the front of the vehicle with the UC looking at the engine with the hood up. They're trying to coordinate that stop, guys. 
21, that pickup's going right behind you right now. Just keep an eye on that. Take the front. Switch them up, guys. I got it, I got it. Stay clear. Get out, down, now. Get out. Can somebody stop that uh, Ford truck? We're disrupting, guys. Straight ahead, head south. That pickup. Tu amigo? Is that your car? No? They got it, they got it. Here's the dope that he sold, the crack cocaine. So we're gonna test this dope. That guy's phone? Yeah. Yes. Did he throw a gun down? Or was it the phone that he that threw down? Phone that okay. Was. The field test kit has a pink separation over a blue separation, and that separated really well. So uh, pretty sure that it's gonna be cocaine, which is what we were expecting him to say to. This is crack cocaine. And then the $5,000 that was recovered that we purchased. You got money and open hand. Money and open hand, nothing be more beautiful That's than that, LT. Successful operation. Absolutely, Good work, absolutely. It didn't work out where we were supposed to. We launched, uh, we drove up, that our driver bypassed where he was supposed to go. I was ready to launch out of the van and he took that turn so fast that it actually, centrifugal force launched me. Yeah, I saw him fly out of the, out of the van. I basically got launched clear out of the picture. It worked out perfect, actually. I just wasn't able to play on that one. Lessons learned, as usual. I think I hit the ground about 20 miles an hour, so. <laughs> Superfly there. I'm Holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were trying to catch up. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's go, guys. Hop in, hop in. <laughs> We're going to the Great State Fair of Texas. These are the usual suspects. When we do outings, there's a lot of furniture being broken, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of laws being fractured. <laughs> My wife got it, she was a cop. I worked 17 years as a detective in the narcotics division. So she understands the, the strains and the stresses and the, uh, and the demands being a SWAT cop where your, your hours are changing all the time. That's the downside to the job that we have is that you get so wound up and so tense over issues and, and operations and things like that. And it's what family does it gives you an outlet. It gives you a way to bleed off some of the, the stress and the strain and just relax and, and hang out. This is a guaranteed good time, right? Thank goodness he's funny, because otherwise he'd be embarrassed. Like. <laughs> I can't run. Matt, you can hold my hand if you need to. Okay. Nick, you hold my other hand. <laughs> oh. I can look down here now, see if you can see mom still. <laughs> I'm holding on tight, I'm holding on tight. She's got daddy wrapped. He won't admit it, but she does. <laughs> Pig takes yeah. off. When he, when he runs, now you gotta shake your, uh, your pom poms, okay? Can you do that? Can you shake them real hard when they run? Show me how you're gonna shake them hard. Show me how you're gonna shake them hard. Shake them very, very hard. Very, very, very hard like that, okay? Did you see him do that? And Claire, did you see what they did when you shook? Okay. This is a proud moment for me. My daughter cheerleading for pigs. Good job because you cheered good. Go back there and cheer again. Get ready. Look at there. What do you say? Thank you. It was an excellent day. Yep. I have to say that there's nothing more important to me in, in my life than my family. It's the only thing that makes life worth living.
and then moving and all the three windows of the seats, right? This is actually 2914. We're getting ready to run a, a drug war for narcotics. It's, this one's kind of unique in the fact that uh, they're very diversified inside. They're allegedly selling crack. It's a bootleg house for alcohol, and they also sell candy to the neighborhood kids. Unknown of uh, old people, unknown of weapons, was saying yes for kids for the simple fact of the candy house as well as toys have been seen. I have uh, a Jane Doe and a John Doe warrant. A John Doe warrant is when we don't have the name of the suspect, we have a physical description, then we'll go by that. Suspect's gonna be a uh, black male, 25, 5, 770, a black female, 26, 5, 4, 200. Listen up, guys, this is our target location. Uh, you can see that the storm door there, we're looking at just Pulling it by hand first. If that doesn't work, then we'll have a prize set. And we're going to pull up in two APCs. One team's going to go to the back of the location, start working on those cages, and we're going to go to the front of the location and, and breach that. In case we encounter interior cages that we can't breach on both sides, the Alpha and the Charlie, and we'll come in, drop a bar in here, and we'll pull that whole window unit out and then we'll make our primary entry in through this window if we have to, and that's a final option. Right now, there's no bangs on the inside, correct? All bangs will be on the outside? I want y'all to remember this, kids and candy. That's all I want you to remember, kids and candy, possibility. Any questions on, uh, on the location? OK, let's go to work. Uh, we know we've got one man, one woman inside. Uh, we don't know if we have any kids for sure on this. The fact that they sell candy out of this location, is a pretty good indication that uh, if they don't have any that live there, there's a good chance that some may be there buying candy. So keywords right now on this one are kids and candy. Having kids in a factor doesn't change. It, it changes your tactics just a little bit. You're not as violent. Hold it up, hold it up, let's go. You serving dinner on board? You know, pretty much everybody here has kids. When you have kids, you look at things a lot differently. You look at things from a standpoint of, I've got to be here for my kids when, when this is over. So I think people are safer, ultimately, when they do look at things from a, I've got a lot to lose standpoint. Be me, you. Careful. We'll stage a couple blocks off and redeploy onto the running boards. We get on the running boards because we find that we've got a lot more rapid deployment on top of the house. So anytime we can get on top of the objective quickly and safely, that's definitely a plus. Hey, 40 to 1, let us know when everybody's tight. Right turn! 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 Right Guys, 30 seconds. Right Here we go. Oh, They're very diversified inside. They're allegedly selling crack. And they also sell candy to the neighborhood kids. I want y'all to remember this. Kids and candy. That's all I want you to remember. We're going to pull up in two APCs. One team's going to go to the back of the location, start working on those cages, and we're going to go to the front of the location and, and breach that. You know, pretty much everybody here has kids. And having kids at a location, potentially, it, it, it's sober. You know, you, you always see these kids inside these drug houses, and, and your heart goes out to them because you realize that the fact that we're there could be a life-altering uh, incident for these kids. Gotta let me know when you stopped. I'll give him the launch. Hold on. All right. Nothing. Just a bunch of candy. Deserted. Nobody in there. No bodies. It happens. The house was so small that the uh, Alpha team had already made it to the back by the time I breached the door. So I didn't look this up. I didn't look inside today. We're searching now for the dope. Doing a floor plan and searching for the dope. 
they find it, hopefully that'll be that much dope off the street. Sometimes it's a hit and miss whether they're going to be home or not. I look at it from the standpoint of if we run our operation the way we need to, it's a success. We, we make an impact on the neighborhood. We make an impact on the suspects when they get home and their house is missing doors and missing windows. So uh, I look at that as all, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and that's why we're here. We were lucky just to get here the way the driver drove. Uh, it was basically a brush with death. My life flashed before my eyes and I was bored. But uh, we'll thank Scott appropriately when this is all over with. We gotta go. Move out. So we're leaving again. Another brush with death coming up. Best case scenario tonight is uh, I just put on a good ride for everybody and, and I'm able to get off and maybe throw my hat to the crowd, throw kisses to the girls, and, and that'll be it. What is it in life? You want to be on the SWAT team? You want a rodeo? Let's pick a, you know, safe activity. The last rodeo I went to, my rigging was loose. And so I went ahead and got off and my hand was still in the rigging. Is it fixed this time? You didn't just grab it, did you? Yeah, no. it's, it's good to go. My hand's gonna come out of it this time and everything. Only when I want it to. Oh. Caitlin, get my bag and let's go. No, I'm kidding. It weighs more than you do. This is the first time I've seen JT Rodeo. Actually, he retired. He's coming out of retirement now. So it's going to be kind of exciting to see him to see him do this. I just don't want him to get hurt. <laughs> you know, the guys, they're pumped to see it because rodeo is exciting. It's an exciting event, you know, with all the pageantry and everything else. It'll, it'll be a good time. Yeah, hey, I'm going to walk back here and see if I can find this horse and see what he looks like. That's him right there. 007, Bond, James Bond, 007. See, he's quiet. He's not wasting any energy in here, jumping around, you know, and acting silly. So I'm doing the same thing he's doing, you know. I'm going to wait and use it when I need it, so. I'm not nervous, because I did it for so long, and once you've done it, you know the basics. I think I'm the one who's nervous. I feel like that I'm I'm ready, both mentally and physically, really. Let's go, GT! Woo! Dallas Police Officer J.T. Woo! 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 The most important thing in, in bareback riding is the mark out, you know, and that's holding your feet above the shoulders for his first jump out of the chute. Let's go, baby, let's go! That's when the switch is turned on and, you know, hell's bell. He was a bucker, and um, I was slow. Old and slow, yep. Well, he's going to have to do it again. If he can't end like that, he's going to have to come back again. I, I don't think you can end like this. I don't think you can end your career like these last two rides. So I, I, I think you just need to do it again. To me, the way I rode tonight, that's kind of embarrassing. But the life lesson here is, you know, you can't over-prepare. We do it in SWAT. You know, we, we prepare, we train constantly. I train for it, but I kind of relied on my experience and, and knowledge to get me through the rodeo, and, and that's a mistake. So, you know, I'll, I'll definitely prepare a little bit better the next time, and, and I'll put on a show. I'll definitely be back.